Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Wednesday, May 13th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider the points made here to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Things are getting crazy in boxing. Mike Tyson would turn 54 years of age, 54, by the end of next month. Evander Holyfield today is 57 years of age. And of course, people are talking about them possibly coming back. George Foreman, who came back, but understand, <laughs> Foreman was much younger than these guys when he came back. Foreman is telling people, look, don't write off Mike Tyson. Now, let me just put this diplomatically. I know we're in an era of big, clunky heavyweights, right? I like to refer to Anthony Joshua as clunky. But Mike Tyson would only have, in my opinion, six minutes of viability against Anthony Joshua. Right? In other words, when you look at these short videos where he's hitting a punching bag that's not punching back, where he's flashing hand speed that you didn't see in his fight against Danny Williams, for example. Keep in mind, Tyson fell out of a plane at the end. He lost to Danny Williams. He lost to Kevin McBride. Right? So they release a video and he's letting his hands go. Right? In front of and inanimate object that's not moving. Now I'll agree, if Mike Tyson hits any of us on the chin, if he hits one of these heavyweight champs on the chin, you know, Tyson might take them out. Punching power according to folklore, right, boxing's conventional wisdom is the last thing to go. But we know stamina isn't going to to last in fighters in their 50s. Right? Mike Tyson would literally only have a few minutes to make his case. After that, I think Joshua would give him a bad beating. If Joshua figures out the angles, right? With Tyson, it's hand speed. Tyson also likes to jump around the pocket. Right? If Tyson gets by Joshua's jab. And let's remember, Tyson had a problem getting by Buster Douglas's jab. If Tyson gets by Anthony Joshua's jab, right, maybe Tyson has the faster hands than Anthony Joshua, right? If Tyson's able to find Anthony Joshua and hurt him, and it would have to be early then maybe Tyson has a shot at a KO. But if Joshua, who spars with people like Daniel Dubois, right? if, you know, Joshua, who sparred with Vladimir Klitschko, right? Joshua is a guy who's very well prepared. He spars with world-class fighters. If Joshua is able to survive the first two rounds of the fight. And understand, Joshua survived the first two rounds of his fight against Joseph Parker, didn't he? He survived the first two rounds of his fight against Dylan White. Right? Joshua is an Olympic gold medalist. Maybe he was a late bloomer, a late arriver in boxing. But he's been fighting at the highest levels, both as an amateur and as a pro. So if Joshua, who is a gifted puncher, just like Mike Tyson, maybe the punches are wider, maybe they don't get there as fast, but understand Joshua can shorten his punches, and understand too, Joshua's two-handed, right? If Joshua survives the first six minutes, the first two rounds, against a Mike Tyson, 
I believe that that fight would be over by five or six rounds. I'd be surprised if Tyson didn't imitate Sonny Liston against Ali. Right, Liston famously loses his title in his corner, doesn't come out. Right, Tyson might imitate Oscar De La Hoya against Manny Pacquiao. That's another fight where the other guy was too much and, you know, a proud champion said, hey, I'm just going to sit down here and lose this fight in my corner. I couldn't see Tyson allowing himself to be embarrassed by having the fight linger against a man 20 years younger than him, more than 20 years, with prodigious punching power. Understand these film clips that Tyson and Evander Holofield are releasing are short. <laughs> they don't show you how either would be in the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th rounds. They just don't. Now, <sighs> let's just say if it's a 12-round fight, and understand, young guys today have a hard time going 12 rounds. Do you want me to believe that a 54-year-old, a 54-year-old who's been <laughs> out of the ring <laughs> for years and who looked terrible his last few fights in the ring, you're telling me that that, that guy's going to go 12 rounds, right? Also, you know, look, I'm not saying that AJ's jab reminds me of Larry Holmes or Ali, but it's there. It can break guys up. It kept Joseph Parker off of him, right? I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that Tyson's going to be able to slip that jab. Right, understand too, and I know Joshua's figuring things out, but Joshua's idol, stylistically, to me, the person whose game he has copied is Vladimir Klitschko. I want people to go back to the Vladimir Klitschko Kubrat Pulev fight. Not that Pulev is that adept inside, but every time Pulev got inside, Vladimir Klitschko hugged him. Right now, sure. Back in the day, it was very hard to hug Prime Mike Tyson in the early rounds. But understand, Bone Crusher Smith did that for the entire fight. It's possible. It's on tape. Now, that was young Tyson. Right now, you're talking about a 54-year-old, right? He's going to turn 54 by the end of June. You're talking about a 54-year-old, and we here are assuming that he's going to be able to have his hands free against a guy with a good jab, and that if he gets inside, that guy won't be able to grab him. I think that's assuming a bit much. You know, as with a lot of things in life, the devil is in the details. I could see Mike Tyson against Anthony Joshua six round exhibition right the number of rounds is key the minute a guy's in his 50s maybe this is age discrimination but i'm a skeptic past the sixth round even six rounds is pushing it now in a six round exhibition fight best case for tyson would be he comes in hurts anthony joshua early drops him has the lead has the crowd on his side as all of these alumni of the 1980s, let me wave my hand, cheering for him, hoping for a miracle. Then Joshua gets up. <laughs> let me just say this. Imagine Joshua getting off the canvas angry, trying to come after Mike Tyson. I'm just telling you, he's going to have to do more than he did against Andy Ruiz. He's already taken the hit to his reputation for that first Andy Ruiz fight. So here he'd be fighting a guy in his 50s if he hits the canvas and doesn't stay down. And we're all here assuming that a 54-year-old Mike Tyson punch is the same as an early 20s Mike Tyson punch. Right? Understand, Tyson is in his early 20s when he wins the heavyweight title. It's been more than 30 years. 
But let's say that assumption's true. Well, when Joshua gets off the canvas, knowing that it's only a six-round, you know, fight, Joshua's going to have to let his hands go. Right? So you would have high drama because we all know Mike Tyson's not going to get on his back foot and flash a lot of defense. <laughs> Mike Tyson's not going to be able to hide from Joshua. That's best case for Mike Tyson. Worst case for Mike Tyson is that the younger guy is not intimidated by him. Right? This is not the 80s. If Joshua lands first, folks, it all goes out the window for Tyson. The balloon's deflated. The bubble is popped. Right? You hope you have a compassionate referee if Tyson hits the canvas. Then it becomes elder abuse. Young guy teeing off on an old guy who hasn't been back in the ring, hasn't worked his way by winning fights into the position where he belongs in the ring with a current heavyweight champion. Right? So I'll agree. Let me amend my earlier video. I'll agree for two rounds. Mike Tyson has a chance, but he has to rush Anthony Joshua. He has to let his hands go. Right? Tyson can't fight you from outside the pocket. He doesn't have the jab to just stand there and box with you. He would have to approach this fight like he approached the Marvis Fraser fight. Right? Have both guns blazing early. For me, the more interesting fight, and I know this will sound ridiculous, is 57-year-old Evander Holyfield against Anthony Joshua in a six-round exhibition. The reason I say that is prime Evander Holyfield. And understand, <laughs> that was more than a decade ago. But prime Evander Holyfield, number one, could fight inside. We saw that in both of his wins over Mike Tyson. Right? To me, that's a weak spot for Anthony Joshua. I don't think Anthony Joshua likes to be crowded. I don't know. If he knows what to do, if a guy is savvy, is a highly skilled inside fighter, right, and can put his head on Joshua's chest and go to work, like Evander did both times, he fought Mike Tyson, right? But Evander also has... The ability to move around the ring. At least he had the ability to move around the ring. At 57, it's an open question, but I will say, Evander, every time I see him interviewed, he looks like he's kept himself in shape. I've never seen Evander Holofield look out of shape. Right? So Evander is a guy who did go the distance twice with Lennox Lewis. Right? It's possible. I think Evander is a better boxer in terms of just engaging, not going for the knockout, but trying to just win the round on the cards. I think Evander's a better boxer than Mike Tyson. I think Evander is the kind of guy who can be in front of a dangerous puncher, whether it's Lennox Lewis or whether it's Anthony Joshua, and can actually force that guy to find him. Right? Quite frankly, I thought Evander Holyfield beat Nikolai Valuev. They didn't give him the decision, let's just say, Evander was old then, and he goes the distance with Valuev. Right? So what happens if Joshua's fighting a guy who moves better than he does? Right? If there's a 57-year-old who might be able to move better than Anthony Joshua, it would be Evander Holyfield. Right? What happens if it's not six minutes of mayhem that Joshua has to survive? What happens if even during the slow rounds, he's dealing with a KG vet who might be able to outbox him? 
who won't be caught by the jab, right? Holofield's not one to walk into a jab, right? Won't be caught by the jab, has excellent defense, and has gone the distance against fighters who are big with heavy power, like Lennox Lewis and Anthony Joshua. Understand, too, if Joshua decides to treat Holofield like a little man, Let's say Joshua collapses the pocket. Well, we know one of the secrets to Holofield is Holofield deep in the pocket can hold his own. Right now, I don't believe. Let me throw another old guy in the mix. I don't view Holofield as deadly. Like I view Vitaly Klitschko. Right, but I will say Holofield's a survivor. If it's a six-round fight, I could see a skilled KG vet like Holifield, who always is in shape, who has a back foot, who has lateral movement, who doesn't have to get in the pocket like Mike Tyson. Right? A guy who survived two fights, two of the three, against Riddick Bowe, right? Splits the fights that go the distance and then loses the third fight. Right? I could see Holifield actually giving an Anthony Joshua problems for a few rounds. But the fight better be six rounds. <laughs> because I'm guessing I'm guessing the fact that Holifield's 57 would start to show itself. Even by the later rounds of that fight. And if it were a 12 round fight I would expect the young lion, the young champion to take him out in the second half of a 12-rounder, right? So, it's intriguing that Tyson and Holifield want to come back. If those two fought, I would take Holifield simply because Holifield's beaten them twice, right? I have yet to see Mike Tyson come up with a solution for Evander's style, right? And since Evander looks like he's in shape, since Tyson had hand speed back then, I would expect Evander Holifield, who's beaten Tyson twice, to have the upper hand. If both of them fight Anthony Joshua, I'll concede the first two rounds of Joshua Tyson would be high, high, high drama. Right? It would be high drama. But after that, I would expect Tyson to start to look like he looked against Danny Williams. Right? Understand what happens. Fighters start to get tired. They start to lose the foot speed. Suddenly, things like the jab, the opponent's jab, starts to become very effective. I would expect Joshua to start to land with regularity on Mike Tyson in the third round and on of that fight. Evander Holifield, that's a little bit dodgy. Right, Because Holifield might decide in round one, hey, let me look at the angles. Let me look at this guy. Let me just move around the ring. Right, And Holifield always had a clock in his head. So Holifield would know to come in and flash some hand speed. Maybe try to steal the round, as they used to say. Right, Come in, flash a little bit, throw a combination, and then be on his bike the rest of the round. Right? Holifield might actually force Anthony Joshua to move his feet, to not be big and clunky. Right? And then, of course, Joshua wants to avoid guys deep in the pocket throwing shots. We saw that in the first Andy Ruiz fight. Right? Understand, too, Joshua wouldn't be able to fight the fight he fought in the second Andy Ruiz fight against Holifield because Holifield moves better than Anthony Joshua. At least he used to. <laughs> right? I think Evander AJ is actually a better fight than Tyson AJ. Right? But I'll agree in terms of heavy handed guys with signature punches. Right? Very few people, life's unfair. Very few people have the celebrity, have the image, carry the intrigue of Iron Mike Tyson. I'll agree just from a, you know, discussion point at the bar. 
Mike Tyson against Anthony Joshua would be something to discuss. Right? Food for thought. That's how I see it. I haven't mentioned Deontay Wilder simply because Wilder is coming off a loss. Wilder is dealing with injuries. Right? I think it's unfair to throw another guy in the mix when a guy has been unbeaten for most of his career, has been a multi-year champ, and has just lost. Let's give Wilder a chance to heal. Obviously, I think people here online know that I don't think anybody at heavyweight beats Tyson Fury. I will concede. Fury has a problem against small, fast guys. And Mike Tyson is small and he's fast. Right? Understand, too, Tyson Fury was named after Mike Tyson. There might be a, you know, can I hit my idol type thing going on in the fight, right? Larry Holmes famously wouldn't finish off Ali, who gave him an opportunity. Holmes, of course, was Ali's sparring partner for years, right? Okay, fair enough. Um, that fight, too. Any fight Mike Tyson's in, expect mayhem in the first six minutes. After that. After that, I don't care how much muscle memory my Tyson has. <laughs> After that, I think age takes over. I think father time takes over. Right? I think the younger guys would then have a field day. So some promoter out there could say, okay, let's make this a six-round fight. We're in a coronavirus era. They could sell it as, you know, glorified sparring. Something like that. You know, have it so that no fans actually pay tickets for the fight. It's just Mike Tyson showing up in Anthony Joshua's den. And the two guys going at it uh, in a uh, TV event. Right? Maybe Amazon can put this on Amazon Prime. Um, maybe the guys are savvy enough. Maybe the guys are savvy enough to realize that the big money would be on the back end. Right? Let's hope, too, if Anthony Joshua comes out and is beating up Mike Tyson, he starts to look like uh, Larry Holmes did against Ali and starts to call the referee over. Right? Because you don't want to completely dismantle a legend. Right? You want the win, but you also want to win respectfully. Right? And let's hope that if lightning strikes and Mike Tyson knocks down Anthony Joshua, and there's a sizable group out there that feels that Tyson won the six-round exhibition or sparring session, right? Let's hope that Tyson is magnanimous enough to then say, okay, I'll give you a rematch and, you know, we'll uh, give you a chance at redemption. Anyway, that's how I see it. I would expect the young guys to win. Tyson's interesting for two rounds. Evander would be interesting against Anthony Joshua, quite frankly. In a short six-round fight, I would expect Joshua to dominate after the six rounds. That's, how, that's assuming that Evander comes in looking like he did his last few fights. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.